Hey everyone, it's uh, Joe and Isaiah from the Automator here. And today we're demoing our Fiddler Ripper for Fiddler Everywhere. So we had one before for ripping out a Fiddler. And what it does is it looks at your, you know, Fiddler and Fiddler Everywhere, both monitor your network traffic, and especially your browser traffic. And, you know, an auto hotkey, and I did this for years where I'm like, oh, let me look at the traffic in Fiddler. Let me rewrite that auto hotkey. And then one day I'm like, why am I rewriting this? Why don't I rip it out of Fiddler and have it automatically convert it for me? So I had done that with Fiddler and it was a little broken, but it, it mostly worked. And then Isaiah was, he was using Fiddler everywhere, which I, I think it has some really cool benefits to it. So at some point I'll probably switch, especially now that we have this tool, because we didn't have a tool before. That's why main reason I stuck with the old version. But um, in this example here, we're going to show you how to use this Fiddler Everywhere Ripper. And again, it, it you know you look at your traffic, you it can recreate your browser you know API call, um, and and then adapt it to Auto Hotkey, which is really cool. So, why don't you go ahead and show us? Okay. Thing. Yeah. So what we're going to do is that we're going to just go ahead and open up this script. You can go ahead and modify the code however you want make it a little bit you know, personalized if you need. But the idea is that it allows you to go here on Fiddler, right? And you can get any, any request that you're looking at. You just go to any of it, any one of them, and just click on raw here. And this raw information here is what we usually try to copy. This is what we try to kind of like pass to our hotkey. So what I did is that if you click the copy button right here, it would automatically parse it and it just notified you that it was converted. You go to a place where you can type out a hotkey code and you just control V now to paste. But instead of pasting the raw information like this, it is actually converted to auto hotkey code that can be run. You can just simply click on run and it would work as if it was, you know, so it would create your Chrome object, it would create your headers, then it would look through your headers and set them, and then it would just send the, the payload. In this case, the payload is empty, which it doesn't matter when you send the command with an empty payload, it is just a get. So it works like that. And sometimes what you might want to do is just copy something from here and you don't want it to be parsed by the script. So say you wanted to grab this token here, you can select it, right? And you just hit Control C. When you hit Control C, my script just goes ahead and ignores uh, the change in the clipboard in this case, and it would not parse it. Now, you, you if you paste now, it would just paste whatever you had selected. So Control C ignores the parsing thing. Um, it, it only works whether you click the button here or if you have everything selected and right click and say copy, because those two functions, they change the clipboard and the script is actually change, waiting for the clipboard change, right? So when the clipboard change is happening uh, and Fiddler everywhere is open, then it does the parsing, except if you use the control C. Now we have the, this, these two examples here, which are very simple, like a get example here that you can see how it looks like. One key thing that I want you to keep in mind is that we are actually changing the accept encoding part here. It usually, what happens is that auto hotkey cannot understand certain compression formats. So, we are like Asian looking characters. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you do. Like, you world? do. <laughs> so, so basically what we're doing is that I, I, I do want to note that. So in case that something is not working as expected, you keep in mind that I'm actually changing that line. So what happens is that if I go ahead and copy this, it says convert it to Fiddler and you just go ahead and paste it. And you would notice that the accept encoding is just deflate. So we removed the gzip and the br options from it, usually because our hotkey does not understand it, right? Wait, hold, hold on here, because correct me if I'm wrong, I, I think I'm starting to, to get some stuff. I don't think it's actually auto hotkey, is it? It's the object that we're connecting to, right? Uh, well, that's not that's not entirely accurate, because no? the thing is that you can get, so, so basically you can get the objects receives the information and you see this text that you received you can save it as a file and then use a compression okay uh yeah and, and you can decompress it if it understands it the only thing is that when i use the message box command the message box command cannot decompress that right 
So the message box command does not decompress anything, and that's why you get these characters, these weird-looking characters. But it is a valid file. You could actually save okay. it so to clarify, and decompress it something. So you in you some still could theoretically adapt, or, or find a way to actually unencode it, or however you want to say it. Un yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Auto you, you can it just natively doesn't do it, but well, it, um, again, I, I wouldn't say that it is auto hotkey itself. It's the message box command because the message oh, box okay. command is expecting just text, right? Okay. So that's right. all. That now, I get your point. It, yeah, so but basically, you you get, uh, yeah, exactly. You can you can have it as a file, and you can open it, and you're gonna have the information there. It's, it's okay, but the problem is that we don't need that usually when you're doing a script. You just need the raw text. Yeah. So let me and let's back up now. We have several. I have quite a few videos on Fiddler now, and as Ace and I have done several on how to you know detect hidden APIs and stuff. But to take a step back, if you're totally new to this, now your browser when you use a browser and you load a web page. That's an API call, right? And it goes to a server and asks a request, we try to return something, right? Um, often HTML with some JSON or something else in there. Fiddler will look at all that traffic, right? And so the API calls you were seeing earlier were things that were done with the browser and that we were looking at the traffic. And here we're like, hey, we want to get rid of using the browser. Let's use AutoHotKey for doing this stuff. And that's what we're really right. trying to do. Yeah, and basically by using the com object, we're bypassing the browser itself. Now, uh, that's exactly what Fiddler Everywhere is doing. And basically, as you can see right here, this is the, the part that I wanted to kind of like show. You see that as it is gzip deflate br, down here, you get garbage as well. It looks like garbage to you because it is not decompressed. Now, if you click on the preview button, that is an image. The only thing is that that image is kind of like you cannot see it. This tab in here is decompressing it and showing whatever is there. And that's why you get some images whenever you, you do this and you get an image from the site. You could see the image in the preview tab, but if you go to the body, you would see a lot of, a bunch of weird stuff, right? So again, that is exactly what is happening to auto hotkey. If you, this body part here is what happens to the message box command. You get this garbage thing. But if you coded something to decompress it and then show it, you will be able to see it anyways, right? So maybe it's something um, we'll work on. Yeah, so basically I do want you to keep in mind, if you are expecting, if you are somebody who has worked with this kind of things and things are not exactly as you're expecting, just remember that I'm actually changing the encoding line to just be deflect, that's all. And the really cool thing is that you can use your browser do this and actually what we'll do and which if you want to demonstrate this is show it how it you can see it as a composer in the composer window in fiddler as well so you can take it the actual browser does a call inside fiddler you can what is it e i think you said you hit yeah the letter e yeah. if you right click on it it says edit in the composer right no. and basically what happens there is that's what i have up here so here i just hit e and it just brought it here yeah. and I could just execute that one API call and see what the answer is. So if I hit execute, I get a 200 here, which means that it is okay. Right. Um, but basically I just executed that one API call. That's yeah, what happened. And if you don't get a 200, you might want to stop right then and there, because if you didn't get a 200 here, you're, it's not going to, you're not going to get it. Yeah. It's not going to work in, right. in Yeah. And, and so, so. The are too old or whatever. Right. But we don't have to go in all that. Um, but then you can say now, and, and actually go back to the, did you execute it? Yeah, I did. Okay. Go back to the live traffic view. And at the bottom you'll see, and it's a little hard, maybe hard to tell in this window, but you can actually look at, when Fiddler did the API call versus let's say it was Chrome, right? Okay, and so yeah, here. So so here you could see when it was Chrome that did the echo, right? And in other cases, you would see that it is auto hotkey. Right. So depending on who made the call, you would see exactly, you know, you would get information about who did the, yeah. the, my, the particular call that you were trying. But my main point is you can still use Fiddler to look exactly what was being sent and seeing and compare it yeah. yeah compare okay so my auto hotkey call how does it differ from the browser call to see if there was something why it's not working or something like that. so one interesting thing that when i was on the call with take i don't know if this was in the video or not i don't think it was because i was when i was testing this with um dylan we were seeing it and what was being sent i told i told auto hotkey send exactly this we would look at it in here and it wasn't that. 
And then what happened was, was Tank was telling me Fiddler was actually, because it was passing through Fiddler, Fiddler was tweaking it slightly because it was going through Fiddler and Fiddler was, was tweaking it. A yes, I slightly. would, I would. Oh. Right. So, so yeah, the thing is that this is one part, very good that you mentioned that. Another thing that I'm doing in my code is that if the windows of Fiddler exists, I'm actually setting up that as a proxy there. Right. And that means that all the traffic that the script, whatever script you're using sends, is going to pass through Fiddler. Now, there's two reasons why you might want to do this. Remember that um, there's, if you want to see the traffic, most of the traffic of the traffic is SSL uh, or TSL encoded. So you cannot look at the traffic because it's going to be encoded. Now, Fiddler creates a certificate on your computer that you could optionally install. And after you have that certificate, then Fiddler can see the traffic. Okay. So if you want to take a look at our hotkey traffic that is being sent over an SSL connection, you would need to pass it through Fiddler to be able to look at it. Now, when you pass it through Fiddler, there is a slight modification that happens that usually doesn't interfere with whatever you're doing, but in some situations as you experienced, might be the reason why you're not seeing the same result that you were expecting. Yeah, yeah and that was actually really well said in the last part of this, because it wasn't breaking it. It was no, just the fact yeah. that it wasn't what I sent that really confused me. Of like, wait a minute, right. I never noticed this, but in in in, in reality, um, Fiddler. It is there. Like it is there all the time. You just don't even notice it because there's so much information being sent right. that you don't even notice that it is being added. Uh, so in any case, like this little tool is very cool for whenever you're trying to emulate whatever the browser is doing for a specific purpose. Like for example, I'm at, I want to get some information of, of a public page or whatever, but I don't want to be loading the whole page. I just need that one little specific thing. Right. And I noticed that the browser does an API call, then I would just go ahead and do that. Like I just copy the API call that I'm interested in, paste it in out a hotkey, tweak whatever I need, because I could just go ahead and comment out some, some uh, headers that I don't need. And that's it. I just hit send and I get the, the information that I need. And it is extremely fast instead of having to scrape the page itself, right? And just to clear, just also to point out, if you're new to this, the very line three and line 17, because they're on the same row where the things start and end, you can't just comment that out, right? Like the you, you would have to... All right. So these opening brackets, if you comment them out, you have to make sure to put it in the previous line, for example just to make sure that the bracket is closed. That is fixed in Arahotki 2. They now in Arahotki 2, you can have the brackets like this. So you could actually just have it like this and the brackets would be, you know, on their own lines, which should be like that. <laughs> um, but for now, you just have to note that if you want to comment out the last line, if you comment it out, just make sure to close the bracket. So if you don't do it, out of hotkey will complain. It's gonna say like missing bracket or something like that. The same with the host. You just go ahead and re remove it from there. That's it, and that's it. And you just the commenting out of headers and stuff is is important because in my experience, even though your browser does this and sends you know twenty different headers, you don't need twenty different headers. And the more you send to me, most often the the more likely something's going to change and break. So I like to comment most of these out and see if it still works. If it does, I trim it down to as small as possible and it, it usually keeps working. For people like me who like to look at this code and try to figure out what they are doing, right. I always find that they send a lot of information that I'm like, wow, like really? They're getting this out of my computer and you would be surprised. People are freaking out about so right in the middle of that, Isaiah's lost his uh, internet. I had paused it here and waited for a while, but he hasn't come back yet. So I thought I'd, we were pretty much done with this video. This is a pretty cool tool. Being able to use Fiddler everywhere to rip your traffic and replicate it and everything is very cool. So check it out. Watch our other videos on Fiddler if you like. And comment in here if you have uh, some you know ideas. We might create a separate version that will allow you to shove the data into a that for loop header or versus write it separately. I personally like them written out separately, the different header commands. Isaiah likes it this way. This way is 
quote unquote better in the sense of it's all an object. However, I think a lot of people using this, if you're new to it, it's, it's less intuitive if you're not used to playing with objects. And I like making stuff simple that basically everybody can use. And so let us know in your comments here, which way you prefer. Cheers. Hey, thank you for watching that video. And I don't know if you're aware of it, but we actually do offer services. So if the stuff you're learning here is a bit above you or you just don't have time, reach out to me at joe at v-automator.com and we can talk about how we can help you.